Hey guys, welcome to the Road to the Kang Dynasty. In this series, I'm going back every single month and revisiting a previous MCU movie and making updated custom Lego minifigures to make them as accurate to the movies as possible. All right, guys, today it's finally time for Age of Ultron. There are so many more minifigures that need to be shown in this video that I can only fit this many in the thumbnail, but holy cow, guys, it's going to be awesome. So sit back and relax. Be sure to take close, close notes because there's a lot of figures and a lot of parts needed for this. Last I counted, there were over 30 figures here, so going to be a crazy ride. Thank you so much for your support. Be sure to hit like and subscribe down below, and let's get it. Well, there's one thing to address. Of course, Jonathan Majors has been fired from the MCU, and we don't really know if Kang is going to be the main focus going forward. Rumor has it that the next Avengers movie is just titled Avengers 5 for right now, and it's not going to be about Kang. So I don't really feel right changing the Kang Dynasty name of this series just yet. But of course, when we get the update of where we're going in the MCU, I'll start updating these from there. But until then, let's keep moving on. <laughs> So as always, I try to go in sequential order of appearance as closely as possible. So let's just go ahead and start off with Age of Ultron Iron Man. Back in 2015, we got an amazing, amazing minifig for the likeness for Iron Man in the movie. Of course, the helmet lifted up and everything, but there's really no upgrades I can make to this because the figure, even almost a decade later, is literally still perfect. Now, our Captain America minifig from 2015 and 2016, Age of Ultron Civil War, was pretty perfect, but randomly, in 2023, we got an updated Age of Ultron torso, so of course, that's what I'm going to use here with the new helmet and head combo that gives you the chin strap. Also, we took the legs and arms from Captain Carter from the LEGO Marvel Collectible Minifigure Series 1, and of course, you can't forget the shield. This is pretty much the ultimate Captain America you could ever hope to build. The Age of Ultron Thor torso from 2015 is pretty much perfect and basically the best place to start, but of course the new hair and head combo we've been getting for Thor lately actually works out pretty well in my opinion, so that's what I'm going to use here. Then these legs are dark blue on top and black on bottom, dull molded legs to give him boots. These were in the Lego build a mini figure section at the Lego store at one point, but I used the eraser method on some legs from Fantastic Beasts, and of course you gotta include Mjolnir to tie it together. Hulk is always a tricky one because sometimes it makes more sense for him to be minifig scale if, you know, you have like a diorama going on, but at true scale, the big fig Hulk is among the best. The cool thing is with this Hulk, uh, we have both versions from Age of Ultron. The minifig scale version came in a Toys R Us exclusive minifigure pack, and I actually like this one a lot. It's actually one of my favorite Hulks Lego has ever given us at any scale because I love those dual molded legs, and of course the printing on the legs and the side printing is really great, but the Age of Ultron Big Fig Hulk is still one of the best as well. Got that leg printing on there. Definitely hard to argue with. So no matter what route you want to go, we've got options for the Hulk. Now in that Captain America set in 2023, we also got a Black Widow randomly from Age of Ultron. That being said, I still think the original version from 2015 looks better for the torso and legs. So everything is from that minifigure, except we do have the new Black Widow arms from the, uh, you know, 2020 version of Black Widow. So you get the stingers on there and the shoulder pads. And I ended up leaving the gray gloves on there because I like that it adds just a little more color to the figure. But of course, you're welcome to use black if you think that looks better. As far as accuracy goes, the 2015 Hawkeye is, in my opinion, one of the better looking MCU figures we've ever gotten. And I know that's kind of funny to say for Hawkeye, who's a little bit basic in the costume department to begin with, but I cannot bring myself to make any updates to this whatsoever. Now, Hawkeye does wear a couple different outfits in the movie, but this is the main one he wears. There are some times where he wears an outfit that looks quite a bit like the original Avengers outfit, but for the most part, I think that the actual official Age of Ultron Hawkeye Hawkeye is still the best way to go, so that's what I'm going to recommend here. Interestingly, we did get a Baron Von Strucker minifig. He's not particularly valuable, but he is a little on the rare side because he only came in one set ever, the uh, Hulk Hydra Fortress Smash, which was a Lego store exclusive, and it was available at Toys R Us. No real updates to make to the figure because I think it looks pretty good right out of the box, but that's Strucker. 
Over the years, LEGO has given us several different, or really more accurately, two different Hydra soldiers from the opening scene from Age of Ultron. One of them, of course, being the ones from 2015 that kind of have the Chitauri tech. And then we also got this other one with the Hydra badge here from the Infinity Saga wave. I think both are just fine figures. And from my eyes, I think that both of these costumes were on set for the movie. So they're both kind of accurate. So whichever one you have, or if you have both, that's what I'd recommend here. We do get to see the Iron Legion for the first and only time in the MCU, and of course these are Tony Stark's Iron Man drones that he sends out in Sokovia. I really like these a lot, they came in the 2015 Avengers Tower, there's no real upgrades I would personally make, however, I have seen people use the arms from Goliath from the Lego Marvel Collectible Minifigure Series 2 to add just a little bit of extra detail, but I don't know if it's 100% necessary, so you do you. To make Tony Stark, I would recommend just using the Iron Man 3 Tony. I think it works really, really well. And a little bit later in the movie, we do see him with short sleeves on. So, of course, you could give him the tussled black hair if you like that better than the brown. And you could give him the short sleeve arms from Ethan Hunt from LEGO Dimensions, if you so choose. We see Helen Cho for the first and only time in the MCU in this movie, and thanks to the $500 Avengers Tower, we actually have an official Helen Cho minifig. As far as accuracy goes, it's going to be pretty tough to beat this, so I'd recommend just using the actual LEGO minifig LEGO gave us. Now, I primarily remember Bruce Banner in his lab coat from when they're creating Ultron, so for this, I just used this regular city torso. There are a lot of LEGO lab coats you could choose, so, you know, do with that what you will. But, of course, the head and hair come from the 2023 Bruce Banner, which was pretty accurate in my opinion. Now you're not seeing double, it's just that I can't decide which Ultron Mark 1 looks better. This is the original from 2015, and this is the one from the 2023 Avengers Tower. There are things I like about both of them, but I just don't know which one I like better, so I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to decide which one makes more sense. Of course, this one is in a $500 set, but technically it's still available, whereas this one's been retired for almost a decade. So again, I'm gonna leave it in your guys' court, but let me know in the comments which one you guys like better. Here we've got Ultron Prime, which is basically like his first outfit, and the official LEGO minifig for Ultron actually is just this. Uh, he did not have the helmet, but if you use one of the Ultron helmets from the Ultron Sentry drones, I think it just looks so much better. I understand that, you know, LEGO went for it a different route just so that, like, Ultron can continue to build up to his final form, which, of course, we'll also look at in this video, but I do think with the helmet, it just looks so great. It reminds me a lot of the comics, and I think it's honestly hard to beat this, so that's what I recommend here. Now, Ulysses Claw shows up for the first time in this movie, and we won't see him again until Black Panther, which is quite a ways away as far as this uh, showcase series is concerned. But regardless, I do think the easiest way to build him is using the hair and head from the original Ulysses Claw from 2018, with the torso and legs from Luke Skywalker from the Dagobah Hut play set from a couple years back. Of course, one of the most famous scenes of the entire movie is the party scene, and we've got tons and tons of Avengers to build from this. Now, <clears throat> all of these are pretty casual, and I don't want to spend a ton of time here because I feel like you probably want to see more superheroes than casual outfits, but here we go. All of the heads are the same heads that we've used across the video, so no need to re-explain those. But for Hawkeye, I used the torso from Bruce Banner from Infinity War with blue legs. For Black Widow, I used the torso from Pepper Potts from 2013 with the legs from Scarlet Witch from 2015. For Thor with his red party jacket, I went ahead and used the Star Lord jacket from Guardians Volume 2 slash Infinity War and dark blue legs. For Tony, this is the toughest one to build, I used this torso from from the Shanghai Gangsters from Indiana Jones from back in 2009, and I gave him the short-sleeved arms from Ethan Hunt from LEGO Dimensions. You could alternatively add a red hand on there from when he's trying to pick up the Mjolnir in the party scene. For Bruce Banner, I used the 2023 Infinity Saga version, and for Steve Rogers, technically I haven't told you how to build his head yet, so He's just got this, uh, you know, regular hair. The face comes from Sam Flynn from Tron. And the torso comes from Eric Selvig or Jerry Seinfeld. Boy, there's a sentence I never thought I'd say. And dark blue legs on there. Now, yes, there were other people at the party like Rhodey and Maria Hill and Helen Cho. But really, we're just going to focus on the main six Avengers. And wait a minute, there was somebody else at that party. Hmm. 
Now, as we go through the MCU again, I have been making every Stan Lee cameo in all the movies, and in this one, he plays a World War II veteran who thinks he could drink some of Thor's, uh, you know, adult beverage, but doesn't really hold up against it so well. That being said, I went ahead and used the party Rockstar Alfred head because I really like those sunglasses with the mustache on there. I gave him Kevin Feige's Avengers hat since Stan Lee has like a dark navy World War II veteran hat on. I think it makes sense to make it an Avengers hat since a veteran hat won't exist in Lego. And I gave him the torso and legs from Aldrich Killian from Iron Man 3. So once again, you're not seeing double. The one on the left here is technically its own minifigure. This came with the Ultimate Collector's Age of Ultron uh, Hulkbuster from many, many years ago, 2018 at this point. Basically, the deal was if you look at the shoulder area, it's kind of like open and there's some open printing on the sides of the legs as well as on the back here because it's supposed to be integrating into the Hulkbuster suit for Tony to be able to control both suits at once. So it does look good. It's, you know, interesting but i don't think you absolutely need to have this figure but since it's technically an age of ultron figure and it's a blink and you miss it type thing in the movie it's probably worth including in the showcase because i know you guys well enough that i'd get a million comments saying where's this version of iron man so making everybody happy here <laughs> For Nick Fury, I think the most accurate version for this movie is the one from the Helicarrier. Uh, you know, I realize this is technically the rarest version of Nick Fury that's ever come out, so I'm sorry to have to use it, but I do think it's the most accurate. Of course, there are many Nick Furies from over the years, and they're all pretty similar, so you could just go ahead and use whatever one you happen to have in your collection, but this is the one that I recommend. Here we've got Hawkeye's wife, Laura Barton. Now, of course, we do see Hawkeye's kids in this movie too, but in favor of time, I'm just gonna show you how to make Mrs. Barton here. So I used dark blue legs, the torso from Ellie Sattler from Jurassic Park, the head from Captain Marvel, of course, for Marvel, and the uh, regular long brown hair for the female. So I think this works out pretty good, keeps it simple, and gets the point across. Eric Selvig appear in this movie, and I'm just using the one from the Age of Ultron on uh, Avengers Tower, the $500 one. It may not be the most accurate to what we see him wear in this movie, but the head is the one that they made to look like Stellan Skarsgård. And honestly, I just think it's easier to keep moving on and just use what they already gave us. But I'm sure there's a great torso out there. And if you have an idea, let me know in the comments. Now, there are tons and tons of Ultron drones in this movie, and basically there was an army builder pack where you got three of these minifigures in the cheapest Age of Ultron set back in the day. So these actually aren't too expensive to pick up on the secondary market, but they are really great for army builders, and I don't really think there's any change that needs to be made, honestly. For the ultimate final form version of Ultron, I think it's pretty tough to beat the actual minifigure Lego gave us. I can't think of any upgrades to make to this to make it look any better, aside from the fact that maybe the arms from the Tin Man could work. I keep those arms on my Iron Man Mark I, so maybe if you wanted, you could put those arms on, but really this figure is getting so rare and so valuable that I don't wanna pop the arms off and take a chance at cracking anything. So I'm gonna leave it as is. I really think you could do the same, but those Tin Man arms could work if you happen to have them and want to give it a try. It's becoming more and more apparent to me with time that LEGO loves to go back to Age of Ultron and just make these random blink and you miss it characters. We have the Hydra agents, we have that open Iron Man armor, and then we have this scene where Iron Man for a split second just has a little bit of the armor on when he's fighting against uh, Vision when he wakes up in the Avengers Tower. And this one came with the Avengers Tower gift with purchase back in 2018. And this one came with the god awful 2022 $550 Hulk bus. Again, I think your Age of Ultron collection could be complete without having either one of these, but on a technical level, if you want to try to get every variant of every character, you will need not one, but both of these. Now, there's a lot of nuance when it comes to vision, so let's strap in and I'll explain. Of course, this version here is the 2016 version, not actually the Age of Ultron version. The Age of Ultron version has a blue gemstone in the forehead because it was still based on concept art when LEGO was designing it, and of course, Loki Scepter had the blue gemstone in it, which we know ended up being the yellow Mind Stone. They updated that in 2016 and used that again in 2018 for Infinity War, but if you have the original Age of Ultron version, technically, that is not the most accurate version you can get. Anyways, this is the only version of Vision we've got in the green and pink 
you know, look that has the full legs because in the 2023 Avengers Tower, we got a new vision, which I think does look pretty good, but he's phasing. So you can see that the cape is a little bit see-through with that foil piece and the legs are transparent because he's like phasing through a wall or flying or whatever the case may be. So while I think that the newest vision definitely has the best detail printing, I still like the original vision best because it's technically a full figure and you don't have to, you know, jump any gaps in your mind because he's phasing. So I'm not really sure which one I like best. Let me know what you guys think and we'll keep rolling on. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, we finally got to these characters who made their debut in this movie. Now, these are both the 2015 figures. I didn't make any updates because honestly, I think both are pretty good. Scarlet Witch got that incredible leg printing there that shows her skirt. And of course, you've got the torso with the jacket as well. Yes, we've gotten some Wanda heads that maybe look slightly better, but for simplicity's sake, I'm keeping it as is. And for Quicksilver, he only came in one set and it was that same set that Strucker came in that we talked about earlier in the video. So you can only get it at the Lego store or at Toys R Us. So a lot of people missed out on Quicksilver just because of how limited it was to find him. And overall, I really, really like both figures and really can't think of anything to update to either one because they both look so good. Over the years, I feel like a lot of people have missed the fact that Iron Man has a brand new armor for the final battle in Age of Ultron. It's very sleek and I really, really like the way it looks. And Lego did give us a minifigure of it in 2015. I believe it's Mark 45 if memory serves correct. Of course, you could lift that helmet up and see Tony's face underneath, but this is one of my favorite Lego Iron Man minifigs just because I love the printing on the mask, and of course, that very detailed torso print is awesome as well. War Machine does show up in this movie, and I think the most accurate way to get his look from this movie is using the Civil War War Machine, basically from head to toe. What I did is I used the handcuff trick where you cut off the chains of handcuffs and then put the cuffs back on just to add a little bit of bulk to the figure, and I added the gun on the back that comes from uh, the Iron Patriot minifigure, although all of those are pretty common pieces, so you don't actually need that minifigure. That's just where I got it from, and I do want to make a note. In 2020 four we got the iron man or excuse me war machine mech and this is the minifigure that came with it and a lot of people have said online oh this is supposed to be the age of ultron armor well if you look at the age of ultron armor it is definitely black and not dark gunmetal gray like this so i'm not really sure what to make of that also in age of ultron he has a white arc reactor and white eyes now we have not really gotten a war machine where we can pull that off perfectly because a lot of our war machines have red eyes with the exception of the 2013 one that has white eyes so you could put this mask on here and everything but basically in my opinion there's no way to make a perfect war machine from age of ultron with the pieces we've got however the one they gave us in 2024 is definitely more accurate to the cartoons and animations than it is age of ultron so just bear that in mind as we keep rolling on here we've got Maria Hill in her S.H.I.E.L.D. outfit, and this is the exact minifigure that came in the S.H.I.E.L.D. Helicarrier from, I believe, 2015, and, uh, tough to update. It just looks so good. You got the S.H.I.E.L.D. patch on the arm, so we're gonna leave Maria Hill as is. Now, in the final scene of the movie, we get all of the new Avengers, where Captain America almost says Avengers Assemble. I always love watching that scene. It's so great all these years later. And we do see Falcon there. Yes, we see Scarlet Witch, we see Vision, we see War Machine, but really, a lot of their outfits are so similar to what we've shown in this video. I really don't feel the need to make all of them, but we gotta include my boy Falcon. So what I did here is I used the wings, the head, and hair from the uh, original Falcon, uh, that is from Infinity War from 2018. The arms come from Barbara Gordon from the Lego Batman movie. Yes, the skin tone doesn't match perfectly, but it does give you that short sleeve look, which I think looks great. Then of course I used these legs. Uh, I believe these came from the Spy from the Lego collectible minifigure series, if I'm not mistaken. And with that being said, that brings us to the end of our Age of Voltron showcase. Wow, that was a lot of figures, so let's wrap this up and call it a day. All right, guys, stay tuned because we're rolling on into the new year. Next up, of course, will be Ant-Man, which I'm super excited about. I love that movie. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.